Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We've been focused on encouraging everyone to circle the vote and become more educated on what's going on during this election season. Our next guest is here to help us make sure we all know what's up when it comes to politics. Please welcome political political commentator Quentin R. Giles. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Before we jump into politics, how did you yeah. become so passionate about it? Well, uh, by trade, I'm a social worker, so I'm a licensed mm. master social worker. So um, my mom. Oh, really? Yes. Shout out to your mom. She's awesome. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I have an undergraduate and a master's in social work yeah. and I'm licensed at the master's level. Wow. And so um, I've always had a passion for helping people and kind of breaking down constructs and making it easy to understand. Thank you. And so with politics, it's so important that we're involved and it's so important that we know what's going on because it affects every part of our lives. Yes. And so I take that education and that way of talking to people and just break it down and make it easy and fun mm. to understand. Make it more palatable for exactly. the everyday person. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Because yes. you need to know. We pay these people with our taxes. So yes, I need you to know what's going on. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Don't yes. Risk it. Yes. I like that. <laughs> with, with this voting season, it's really important for us to get our younger voters engaged yeah. and to really make them knowledgeable of what's happening in the world. So yeah. how do you think we can effectively make them more engaged? Effectively, I think you need to put candidates that are authentic. And even if they say things that may not be uh, palatable, mm -hmm. um, I think what young people and millennials in particular want authenticity. And we want to know that you stand for something. Mm -hmm. Policies yeah. and procedures are okay, but we want to know where do you stand. And so I think the more that politicians stop trying to be politicians mm -hmm. and be people, mm -hmm. then that will engage voters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. Well, Pete Buttigieg, he is, mm -hmm. you know, making some strides. He yeah. really is. Yeah. What would be some of the drawbacks if the Democrats had him as the nominee? I think one of the major drawbacks is people uh, will feel disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. um, Pete is making amazing strides and yes, he is the first openly gay candidate, but when we look at his resume compared to some of the other candidates' resumes, it, particularly the women, people kind of see another white male mm -hmm. just getting ahead. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the one drawback is people will feel like the system is kind of rigged a little bit mm -hmm. or that particularly black and brown people's mm -hmm. voices are not as important or women's voices uh, for, for that, that matter. matter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he needs to do a little more work. You know, mm -hmm. I, I applaud him for getting out there. Anybody and everyone should be able to run for office, but that resume is a little thin. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's a little thin. Yes. You know who's really shaking the table on my timeline right now? Yeah. A lot of my timeline, people are fascinated with Michael Bloomberg because, oh, yes. you know, he's yeah. able to say, uh, proudly that he can finance his entire campaign yeah. and he won't stop at anything but yeah. he does have a pass you know he does. the stop and frisk policy policy a lot of yeah. people were talking about what he did and how he handled that situation so i'm curious yeah. do you feel like the way he handled that in the past is going mm. to now affect him mm. that's good and, you know it, it, should. it should now i don't know if it mm -hmm. will and and we've i'm gonna say it we've had a lot of our black leaders come out and support him yeah. and i'm so disappointed at that right now because the he was defending stop and frisk all up until a week before before he announced his presidency. And so it feels a little dis no, it feels a lot of disingenuous. Mm -hmm. um, and I think by having these black leaders come out and say, well, he apologized to me and I think it's real and it's genuine. What does that do for the community that you tormented mm -hmm. with this stop and frisk policy? Yeah, yeah, you yes. went to a church and apologized, Ooh. which is great, and black people are forgiving, but how about you take it back to New York and apologize and put policies in place and put your money behind mm -hmm. initiatives to reverse. to reverse what you did. Yeah, Up until good. the week before you ran for president, <laughs> yeah. you were still defending it. The, the uh, Central Park Five, now known as the Exonerated yeah. Five, his administration actually blocked that settlement that they were supposed to get for 10 years. Wow. Mm. They got that settlement a year after he was out of office. And then when he was recently questioned wow. about it, his response was, well, they've been proven innocent and so we just have to deal with that. Mm. Well, it's more than just have to deal with that. These men's lives were ruined, so you can't come out a week before your presidency and finance it and run all these ad campaigns with President Obama not technically endorsing you, but it sounds like he's yes. endorsing you, and then think that we're all just gonna buy into it. So I, I really have a problem with I have a huge problem problem with this because he needs to stand up and take ownership of what that is. He needs to apologize for himself and not put other black leaders in front of him. And to those black leaders, mm -hmm. they need to step back and let him do the apology himself. Right, right. And then well, once that's he, a cowardly action in which yeah, he's taken. Yes. Absolutely, right. yes. absolutely. So, and your thoughts on the Houston mayor uh, backing Bloomberg? What, what? I I'm from Houston mm -hmm. and I was really disappointed. I love uh, Mayor Sylvester Turner. I do. I really do. Yeah. 
I voted for him this uh, past cycle, but I was really, really disappointed um, that he came out so soon with it. Like I said before, Michael Bloomberg needs to take it back to New York. You apologize to those people yes. first, and then you come and you make your rounds. But not only apologizing, actually taking action. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And so I, I think African American people really need to raise a brow when it comes down to saying his name on the ballot. Yeah, that, absolutely. But wait, we gotta ask, I have to ask this question. Do yeah. you think it stopped the presses? if he gets Hillary Clinton as his running mate. Hmm. Oh, that's such a sham. I don't believe that that's a real thing. Really? I don't believe Tell that. Tell me, please. No, that I don't a believe sham. that that was a real thing. I think that him and his team put that out there to get people to talk. Um, and he to understands try to, me. I mean, he does. He obviously does. He's very yeah. Trump-like like that. Oh. 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 Yeah, but I don't, I, I that, that, oh, uh, sipping tea? Yeah. Sip more. <laughs> Sip more. Right. right, right. We're here at the circle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, it, it, Hillary Clinton does not want to be someone's VP. This woman ran for president. Right. It should be the president right, right yes. now. Right. And to think that she would somehow come back, and there's nothing wrong with the vice president position, but to say she's going, she would want to even come back and yeah. take that position is one, disingenuous, and two, it's a media campaign. Mm -hmm. That's all it is to, right. to try to trick voters into thinking you're someone that you're not. It's a media mm -hmm. presence yeah. as well. So, so I mean, you, you, you have so much knowledge. Who Thank do you, you think? Uh, who do you think is going to be? I can't say ours, but yeah, who do you think it's going to be? Who's oh, going to win this this nomination? And in, in your thoughts, if you could say it right now. If I could say it just based off of the facts that we have right yeah. now. Unpopular opinion, but Bernie Sanders has the momentum right now. Really? And this is not an endorsement of Bernie Sanders by any means. But when we look at the Iowa caucus, when we look at New Hampshire, uh, and then when we look at Nevada, which is coming up for their caucus, mm -hmm. he was leading in all those polls, mm -hmm. and, and he technically won them. Those people that have um, issues with Hillary Clinton not being president because she got three million more votes, but Donald Trump won the Electoral College, okay. the same argument could be applied with Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg in Iowa. Pete got the delegates, but yeah. Bernie got more votes. Yeah, and the same in New Hampshire, and he's leading in Nevada. So if we're just taking those three states, I have to call it for Bernie. But again, it's way too soon to be calling who's going to wow. get the Wow, let me tell yeah. you something. This will not be the last time yeah. you come yeah. down to the circle. You are so oh, oh, you. Oh, oh, my gosh. Great job. Let's like, give it up for <laughs> Quentin Giles one more time. Oh, thank you. To so keep up with his political commentary, please follow his Instagram at Quentin R. Giles.